Hello and welcome to Casual Shenanigans Gaming, a podcast all about Battlefield, DayZ, all things PC gaming related, and tonight also partially about the PS4. Uh, so, welcome. Um, I have with us today myself, Germ Gaming, one of your hosts. <laughs> I'm also joined. I was distracted by the screenshot you just posted. <laughs> nice. Uh, I'm joined that was great by just in, just in time to like interrupt the whole intro. I posted exactly. the screenshot. <laughs> exactly. The guy's pretty Daisy standalone right there. <laughs> uh, I'm joined by Evil Viking Thirteen. That's me, the Daisy screenshot posting guy. And okay. Joel. I just got a Vita. Oh, cool. Are you serious? I did. I've been checking them out on Craigslist because they're so cheap on Craigslist. Nice. Like, their people sell them with like five games for like 120 bucks. Oh, nice. Would you recommend it so far? Uh, well, I the only reason I wanted to get it, not necessarily for the games on the Vita, because I, for... just, I just never play games on portable devices. You want to but... stream? Yes. <laughs> and I tried it out already, but I'll save that for a little bit later. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I'm, man, I'm excited to talk about that. Like the streaming, there's a lot of PS4 temptation going on right here. As all. Huge, guys, Joel is buying tech just for this podcast. Like he's so dedicated to just giving you guys the latest and greatest. I mean, Thanks, I Joel. I need a new suit, but I'm I'm just uh, just just give me this hour of podcast to convince you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Joel, for hardcore mode, convince me to buy a PS4. <laughs> <laughs> for, for hardcore mode. <laughs> That's, with, only, uh, that... with only two hearts, <laughs> not three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, I just got a text from my brother, the one in the army, saying, how do I get another SIM card for my phone? He's on a different phone. How do I get a SIM card for my phone? I lost the one I have. Wait, how do you what? lose? How do you lose a SIM card? What By are you doing? accident? <laughs> But, but why would you, why is, why is the SIM card, like, it stays in the phone. That's kind of its thing, is you put it in the phone and then you leave it. Okay. Um, I, okay, guys, if you were leaving comments on the video, um, it does not appear that I can actually see those comments. Oh, no, I do see comments. All right. Hey, people <laughs> watching. Uh, good old Google. We start the podcast like we mostly do with the news. There's not, not actually a ton of news tonight. But uh my second screen just turned off. It's bad. But I like news. All right. So <laughs> we're so organized tonight. <laughs> this is an interesting one. Eurocom. Uh they're apparently a PC manufacturer I've never heard of. Uh they have just released the first 12 core 24 thread laptop server. You heard that correctly. It is a laptop designed to function as a server. Why? They say for like tech startup and stuff, but it's also for gaming. It's twelve pounds. Uh, as twelve core <laughs> processor. It must be an AMD Opteron. I think that's the, isn't it the only twelve core processor there is that I can think of. Unless it's it's actually on one die. It uh, they just say twelve core processor. I mean, it's a laptop. How much can they possibly be fitting in there? I don't know. Yeah, I doubt it's a dual. Oh dual no no core, no no! It's a Xeon chip it, motherboard. It's an L. It's an Intel Xeon. Must be some experimental. It's an Intel Xeon, and it has the name V2 on the end of it. So that must be. It must be I, some sort of. I wonder if that's CPU a dual thing. chip, chipset. You think so? Because that man, twelve cores, twenty four threads. That's a lot. Mm. But uh, it supports. Do, to, do not set this on your lap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you'll burn. You right will not. <laughs> you will not have kids. <laughs> Hold on, screen's freaking out. So my news screen's black right now. All right, I'll just pull the news over onto this one. That's really starting to annoy me. <laughs> Crossfire might not be worth it. Um, Ooh. This supports up to 32 gigs of RAM and Thanks, 6 Dave, terabytes for me get NVIDIA. <laughs> of storage. <laughs> With RAID 0, 1, 5, and 10 support, it has quad oh, LAN ports. Why do you need quad LAN ports well, on a it, laptop? It is, it is a server. I mean, that, that kind of Yeah, but sense. if they're gigabit, what do you... Like, what do you D does it really make sense? Like, are you running into four different switches? If you're running network stuff, it, it might Dude, make if sense your network is so ports. beastly that you need four LAN ports... No, no, it's not you about You don't the, need to uh, be running it on a laptop. <laughs> it's not about the bandwidth, it's about the separation for testing purposes, I would imagine. Okay, alright, th yeah, that, that makes sense. Well, not a ton of sense, but a little <laughs> I mean, you know, Yeah, you're not gonna need four gigabits of <laughs> bandwidth <laughs> off your laptop. Um, you can slap two GTX 780Ms in it, or two 7970s in Crossfire. Um, and it starts around $3,000, so 
that might have superseded the cyber power PC as the most ridiculous computer I've read about lately. That's impressive, um, honestly. Yeah, that is that is like yeah. I, I'm just I'm more impressed than anything. Like I, I don't that even makes know what me wonder though. It. You know, for laptops, usually like the the power inverter is in the cable. Like how big of an inverter is on that cable? I think with that laptop, you probably just stick it in the body. I mean, is it really that much smaller than like a small form factor PC at that point? It isn't really. <laughs> yeah. I saw a picture of it. It looked like it was like three inches thick. <laughs> That's awesome. Just because uh, we can. <laughs> So uh, you guys heard that Command and Conquer was canceled, right? What? Oh, I, I guess I, I, I heard about that a while ago. Here's some news. So Command and Conquer was being re-released, or they were making a new one. It was going to be free to play. Um, I guess uh, people were excited. And this then, is not the one on Frostbite, or is it the one yes, on Frostbite? Yes, this is the one on Frostbite. And then a month no! ago, EA, hold on. There's the. It's more news. I'm uh, I'm already <laughs> angry. Just keep going. All right, fine. All right. So EA canceled the game one month ago uh but there are rumors going around now and they did mention something on a customer support page about that uh they're actually just shopping around for another studio to finish the game and so once they find another studio uh they will finish the game hopefully release it this means westwood is not involved at all westwood is the classic developer of the series but westwood has never really existed for about gosh like that's true years but their now. influence well command and conquer hasn't existed for a while yeah uh but yeah. Okay, so quick, quick side note. I used to be a huge, ridiculous Command & Conquer fan. Like, I know, that's why I'm telling you about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right, right into my heart, Jeremiah. Like, my, my game development stuff started with modding for the Command & Conquer games, and my younger brother actually, like two hours ago, posted a link on my Facebook page to a video when uh, Command & Conquer Renegade was about to come out, the first-person shooter, one of the, the last game that West, the actual Westwood Studios ever released. It was like a promo video for it where like the game a bit had been like delayed and the main character comes into the studio and like holds them all at gunpoint to release the game. Rocket, they're coming for you next. <laughs> but he posted on my Facebook wall and I'm like, oh, this takes me back to when Westwood was still a thing. And uh, now you're pulling the scab off again. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Oh, no, definitely. Like, I am. I'm just glad I could help. Honestly, uh, I'm just happy for you. <laughs> now I remember why I hate EA. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're trying there to. It is. No, they canceled. The, they're trying to. They're trying to shop around and finish the game. It's not That's gone true. for good. That's true. Yeah, don't yeah, don't just, hate them unless they just definitely cancel yeah. for no reason. I also because the game like, has turned out to be like crap, and they uh, want someone else to do it better. Well, you see, the thing is too is I haven't actually been a fan of a Command and Conquer game since. Gosh, probably Ti Generals. Um, Tiberium Wars was awesome. I got it for free. It was okay. It was awesome. EA sent me a copy to review, and I, I like played a couple hours. EA and... sent you a copy to review? Say what? Wait, no, no, it was Command & Conquer 3. How'd you get a copy? I, this was free. actually a couple of years ago. Like, my YouTube channel was still pretty small. I'm not sure how I ended up on this list, but... <laughs> hey, guys, I'm pretty cool, guys. <laughs> actually, I've got this YouTube yeah. channel. I'd like to review Command & Conquer. Yeah. You know I've what? Also, I've it... also got a helicopter. <laughs> yeah, your mom gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> what this guy's this if you're gonna insult each other, like try harder. It actually wasn't from YouTube, I just remembered. It actually was based off of some of that mod stuff I had done way back in like middle and high school for Command and Conquer. I was still on some kind of mailing list and I got a free copy that way. But cool. I don't know. I, I haven't been impressed with the game since Generals. It just didn't feel like classic Command and Conquer. Oh. Well, I love Tiberium Wars. It's the only one I've played. <laughs> and by mailing list, is this connecting to our torrenting stuff? <laughs> <laughs> it was a very special review copy. <laughs> it, with no multiplayer. <laughs> yeah, it kind of sucked. Um, okay, so Valve, they've started the beta of their in-home streaming features they're going to be rolling out along with SteamOS. Have they, uh, have they rolled out the Steam boxes yet? No. No. Like, oh, okay. I I was like, I was hoping we were gonna hear something about that when they do. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're gonna mention it. Like you'll know. Uh, okay. we'll be we'll be making little squeeze noises when it happens. <laughs> yeah. Um. So they've we're done the beta though. The beta has started. The extremely closed limited beta for in-home streaming. It's pretty cool. Any two computers in a home can be used to stream a gameplay session. Um, Windows can stream from Windows PC to a Steam machine. Or a Steam machine can stream to Windows, or like you can really Steam Windows to Windows, Steam to Steam. It doesn't really That's matter. Awesome. Um, and they said you'll be able to stream from a super powerful computer to anything. If it boots up and can play video, pretty much like all other streaming services, it does not need to be a fast computer. All it's doing is uh, 
is sending audio and video or sending input and receiving audio and video signals. So it does not need to be a super powered. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't need to be a super powered computer. Um, now they did say you can't use the other computer while you're streaming, like the computer that the game is being played on. You know, the the master computer. You can't use it while it's streaming. Like when it's in the game, it is in the game. Um, they're just capturing. It. I guess they're really just doing like a live capture of the feed and beaming it across your network. I mean, that's all they're doing. I, yeah. I say all they're doing. They're doing a really good job of it, hopefully. But that's what it is. So you can't use the other computer. Um, which is no different than like the PlayStation 4. You can't remote play on the Vita while someone else plays a different game on the PlayStation. I mean, that's normal. That's not a big deal. Yeah. It's not uh, like, I mean, it's not even like you can play a game and do something else at the same time anyways. You know what I mean? Like, if you're playing a game, you're either playing a game or you're switching to another app. Well, like you say, like, that, you know what I mean? Some people could think, like, this is good for a household with multiple people using the same master computer. Like, oh, yeah, I'll true. go sit out in the living room and play something while you do your taxes. Yeah. I can imagine they'll probably do something like that soon. In the next couple of years, they'll probably figure out a way to get the streaming even better so someone else can do something else. Mm-hmm. So it's, like, lagging all over the place. Like, <laughs> woman, I told you, make me a sandwich. Get off that computer. <laughs> <laughs> Ruining up my bail field. <laughs> well, that's how Joel talks when he's gaming. <laughs> yeah, and that was uh, that's all the news for tonight. Now we do have a tech question from. Wait, wait, I have news. I have news. Sorry, I'm sorry. What? I should have asked you. What? Dave's got news. I have breaking what's, news. What's a Daisy screenshot? This actually One screenshot better. Is not that's not news. Daisy breaking news. Uh, wait, you. you you will like accept anything. Your yes, standards are so true. low. For you guys, <laughs> not for the podcast. <laughs> I'll share anything with you guys. <laughs> Look at this tiny Twitter screenshot. It's 640 by 380 and super compressed. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> moving on to the actual breaking news. I can say breaking news, right? That's pretty exciting, right? Uh, we'll see. I mean, if Here it we is. Go. There is a, um, apparently a very official rumor that Telltale... Dave, oh my gosh, just shut up. <laughs> Telltale <laughs> is currently working on a Game of Thrones game. Hmm. Ooh, is it going to be better than the terrible cool. Game of Thrones game that was released last year? <laughs> Please, yes. <laughs> Has any of uh, you guys I, actually played that game? I think I got it in a Humble Bundle. Let me look up real quick. Yeah, I got it for free, checked Metacritic, and said, nope. <laughs> yep, Game of Thrones. I have never looked at it. Um, I know there's huh. a Game of Thrones mod for Crusader Kings 2 that's supposed to be pretty good. <laughs> How many of you guys have actually played the Walking Dead series from Telltale? I haven't. I have I haven't done that yet. I have it. I have it. I it's it. incredible. I mean, really, really good. Just hey, just so, get it on your iPhone. Get it on your iPhone. It's on there as well. I already own it. I just oh, you I, do. I, oh, okay. I got it in a bundle. I just uh, haven't. I was just saying, if you're having a hard time playing it, you haven't got it. Get it on your. That's iPhone a great couch game. I played it on the couch. It was very. I'm always. I mean, looking it's like for a story couch book. games. <laughs> yeah, sorry it's a great fold-out couch game <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say that's not true but it, it does it does fold out <laughs> so you sit on the ground since you don't have a couch game it folds into a very uncomfortable bed <laughs> you know how your favorite thing about a bed is when it's split down the middle into two halves and both halves are like dimpled like they're domed <laughs> oh. sleeping on top of a dome is the best it's like a reverse hammock <laughs> <laughs> it's so fantastic when yeah. are we all invited over to your house? Anytime you want. It's I've gonna been, be like a, I've seriously been like inviting, all the dwarves coming into Bilbo's house. <laughs> I, I've been inviting friends for a year and a half, and one friend has come over to actually just visit us. Oh, <laughs> I'm driving there after this podcast. Sure, you are. I've stayed at your house, you jerk. <laughs> Even though you sit three feet away from your TV and you're giving yourself blindness. <laughs> It's true. It's, it's rich blindness. It's best when it's 15 point pixels <laughs> per inch. <Woo! laughs> yeah. So, uh. You, you can say, you get all that jealousy. Don't worry about it. Is that. I, a, is at least I have a couch and a TV. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, I live in a freestanding structure, okay? I don't live in an apartment complex like you. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I can take my freestanding structure anywhere I want because it has wheels. You're going to like show up outside my house. <laughs> <laughs> the American way, take your house with you. <laughs> so uh, we have a question sent in to casual shenanigans at gmail.com. Mail just time. like you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Just like you can actually, before I read the question, I want to encourage everyone to follow us on Twitter. Why might you ask that you follow us on Twitter? Uh, Casual Shenanigans, Germ Gaming, and Evil Viking. 
Uh, the reason you should follow us on Twitter is that where we t- that's where we tweet out updates about the podcast, uh, things we're going to be talking about. We ask you guys to send us in questions, like all those updates that all happens on Twitter. So we're not using Google Plus to send out updates. I think you can do that, but we're not going to do that because everyone still hates Google Plus, apparently. Um, yeah, so Twitter. Follow us on Twitter. We don't spam you, I promise. Um, we forget to tweet way more often than we actually tweet anything, so... You'll definitely not be spammed, but you will get updates about everything. Uh, but Ryan sent in this. I want to begin a piecemeal upgrade of my current computer. I built this computer using employee discounts and spare parts for my time working at Lenovo at the end of last year. Very good. I love Lenovo. Here's what I have at the moment. A one terabyte A drive for documents, files, and games. Someone's a gangster. Someone's not planning on installing a floppy drive anytime soon. <laughs> That's poor future planning right there. You just took up your That's, floppy drive space. It's actually a terabyte of floppy drive space. <laughs> a oh, 500 no. gig C drive for OS and program installations and two 500 gig externals for backups of major projects. He has 10 gigs of DDR3 RAM. He's, oh, using, five, he's using five slots. So he's running in dual channel except for... One stick is all by itself, I guess. <laughs> he does play by his own rules. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then my screen turned off. Hold on, bringing it back over to the other one. Uh, his processor is an Intel Xeon W3570 running at 3.2 gigahertz. That's a quad core. Uh, his GPU is an NVIDIA Quadro 4000 that is slightly underclocked a couple percent due to some crashes while gaming. He's using a stock 625 watt power supply. He's not sure how to check what motherboard he's using. Um, it's the default motherboard for the Lenovo ThinkStation S20. The primary purpose of this computer, and uh, Dave, you will probably be the best person to answer this. The primary purpose of this computer is doing work in Maya, Photoshop, Unity 3D, and After Effects. He does a lot of right. animation and effects work, as well as modeling, texturing, and rigging. He also yeah, plays boy. a lot of games, often indie, but he's looking forward to moving on to BF4. Uh, he has been playing BF3, 40 to 50 frames per second on medium to high settings, but he wants to go to BF4. What parts of my computer should I upgrade in order to have the best bang for my buck as I go, and which purchases would help which goals the most, i.e. where would I see the most effect of a new processor? Thanks for taking the time, and I look forward to your response. All right, I'm going to turn this over to Dave, but uh, really quickly before I do that, it's also helpful if you send in something, let us know what your budget is. Like, Because if you say, I've got two grand to spend, I would just tell you, build a g- computer just for gaming, because this, this is a graphics workstation. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, your your budget's important. Like, if you're saying I can put 100 bucks a month into it, that's a lot different than, hey, I've got two grand because I stole a bunch of Lenovo computers off the line and sold them. <laughs> and I'm looking really Thanks, up Thanks, Craigslist. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you know, so Dave, um, what would you do with this? Yeah, so I was actually in a similar boat a few years back. Uh, I do 3D artwork. I use uh, 3ds Max, Photoshop, After Effects, uh, Cinema 4D, Crazy Bump, all that fun stuff. Uh, I originally had a i7-950 uh, DDR2, 8 gigs of RAM, and a an older Quadra, like one of the kind of like 400 buck ones that's really, it's more like a uh, like a low-end GE Force card. If you cheap out on the Quadra cards, you get crap. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't do a whole a lot of healthy ca- markup there. Yeah, really, it really is. Um, I don't do a whole lot of CAD, and so I really didn't see any kind of improvement in cinema or anything else with the quadro ditched that thing first chance i got for a gtx 580 and that was a massive boost for just all of the 3d stuff and of course now i can play battlefield on my lunch break which is awesome (laughs) um i would say first off uh the the xeons do pretty well for gaming i mean it's it's more of like brute forcing it than anything else uh an i7 would probably give you a few percentage points of increase but first priority is Get rid of that Quadro card. I would say um, a 770 if you can afford it. Well, a Quadro uh, retails for 700 bucks. So and I don't know what the used thing. market is, is, but you might be able to get enough money for like a GTX 780 or something if he sells it. That's just, yeah. If you can sell it and actually get a good price for it because they actually do retain value pretty well, uh, do that and get a nice GE Force card. First thing, get rid of the Quadro. Mm-hmm. Now... So I know Photoshop and After Effects, I don't, I know they don't really need a Quadro. Um, After Effects can make use of uh, CUDA processing, so any NVIDIA GPU. Um, and Photoshop doesn't really need any of that that much. Like, it uses the GPU for some rendering stuff, but 
like a very low end GPU is fine for that. Um, yeah. And so what about Maya? Great. Well, what about Maya and Unity 3D? I know Unity 3D is popular because it runs really well in low end hardware. Do you need high end hardware to code or to build in it? Uh, the editor, I've worked with it just a bit. It it enjoys higher end hardware. I mean, the more you have, the the more you can play around with it, which is always a good thing. As far as Maya goes, um, I use 3ds Max primarily, and both. I, I have used Maya on that same computer too, actually. Now that I think about it, just just barely, just for converting stuff, basically. But uh, it seems to really enjoy the higher end GE Force cards, and I get better performance out of the gaming card than the low end Quadro card for sure. Mm -hmm. So no problems there, in my opinion. Do you know about Maya? Like, I mean, do you know does it what type of processing it prefers? Oh, hey Joel, I didn't notice you totally left us for a minute. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Thanks for prioritizing this. Uh, I sure. I wrote a I wrote a message just trying to be quiet. It said back in one second. Oh, I didn't see it. I'm sorry. <laughs> he saw something shiny <laughs> off camera. <laughs> sorry, I'm down to one monitor now, so I'm trying oh, okay. to. But um, I believe both. Max and Maya have a choice between either DirectX or OpenGL rendering packages for the work windows. And both, uh, well, any GE Force card is going to do awesome with that as long as you get a decent one. I would say, you know, a, uh, a 760 or higher. So I would say sell the Quadro. Uh, yep. And let's, I don't know what the used prices are, but if it's new for 700, maybe you get like four to 500 out of it. Try to grab like a GTX 780. That will you'll see such a huge difference in your gaming because that um for battlefield that quad core is still fine uh battlefield's not a super cpu dependent game so i mean you can like you can run battlefield on an old phenom quad core pretty well yeah uh so yeah probably do that but you know if, if you have a, like a particular budget or something let us know um it is like I don't know what type of motherboard you have. Dave, could you look up what type of mother... Well, no, we're not going to be able to tell because it's going to be a proprietary motherboard. Probably, this yeah. Thing station. But 10 gigs of DDR3 in five slots, so two gigs per slot. It feels like there's probably a better way to do that, but it's probably not impacting your performance that much. So if I was going to do anything other than the graphics card, I think I might just get an SSD. Oh, yeah, there you go. Because you've got... Yeah, that's a huge difference. Yeah, that, that would... I mean, that would make a big difference, not so much for gaming, but for overall just life stuff, just using the computer. Uh, just as an example, uh, when I put a new, I think, 180 gigabyte in my home computer, I took my old 80 gig SSD into work and crammed my OS just barely onto it just because it completely changes how you work. And spending all day, you know, eight hours on a computer that had a spindled hard drive was like pulling teeth. It was really just miserable. And that was one of the best things I've done. Sure, I have to watch my space carefully, but SSDs are fantastic for workflow. Mm -hmm. I can't stand a computer that lags behind me. Yeah, I just, that, that I is the worst. That's it. why I upgraded to an SSD at work. I got one at home for a while, but um, you know, at home when I'm working on stuff, it's a little bit different. But at work, I was having like two video renderers open at the same time, running two different renders. And I had like the entire Adobe suite open and my email and three different browsers because I have to be signed into multiple accounts. I was just like doing extreme amounts of multitasking and it would chug. I would click on a program and it would take like five seconds just to switch back uh, to the program. No, no, I no, like, no, I just no. can't do this. <laughs> so I, uh, yeah, so I, I got an SSD and it, I mean, it was <laughs> night and day difference. Now, the nice thing about an SSD is the same thing I say about memory. I want enough memory or fast enough hard drive that I can do whatever I want and I won't feel a performance hit from it. Like I'll feel a performance hit if I'm doing a video render and my CPU is parked at 100%. You feel a hit from that. But as far as everyday usage stuff, I don't want the computer to ever feel like it's hesitating at all. And that seems like a first world thing, but you can do it. It's very attainable and it's so awesome when you do it. It's so frustrating to go to work on like a, a friend's computer or something like they're having issues or a family member ah, and you no. go touch it and you're like, this is why you're frustrated. It takes five minutes to do something that would take 30 <laughs> seconds on a fast computer. So yeah, I would say I had someone's, uh, I had someone's laptop I was working on a few weeks ago and I, I had it installed open office on it for them and opening the word editor on open office took like, uh, like 45 seconds mm. and you hit the icon and I'm like, did I miss it? Is like the mouse not working? So I hit it a few <laughs> more times, and then I realized if you listen really carefully, like like the laptop hard drive was like thrashing, and then finally it popped up with the splash screen for Open Office, and I'm like, I don't think I've seen the splash screen before. <laughs> laptop hard drives are the worst. Ah, <laughs> oh, painful. SSDs are awesome. Yeah.
So, all right, before we move on to the PlayStation talk, so I'm be I'm frustrated with my video cards right now. So I'm talking to you guys about How come? it. Um, I bought Sapphire is Wait, generally. Do you want to lay down first before you start talking about this? No, no. <laughs> Sapphire is generally considered to be a pretty good uh, graphics card manufacturer. They've got a pretty good rep reputation. So um, I wanted a graphics card with two DVI ports because my monitors are both DVI and I didn't want to run adapters or anything. So Sapphire was the only only people who made a 7950 with two DVI ports. So I was like, no big deal. I bought one. Um, and I've had it every once in a while, like once a month when I had the one card, one of the screens would, the other screen would turn off while I was gaming. And then as soon as I was done gaming, it would just pop back on. So I just assumed it was, you know, just some weird little thing, not a big deal at all. Cause I'm not like reading a second screen while I'm gaming. Um, but when I added the second card for Crossfire, it has gotten just miserable now. Like it shuts off all the time. Yeah. And I'm wondering, should I try swapping the cards? You know, putting the newer card in the top slot and, and seeing it, maybe just the port, the extra have, DVI port just wasn't really that good when they added tried, it in. Have you tried what swapping your cards for NVIDIA cards? I have <laughs> thought about it. I have thought about it. <laughs> okay, honesty moment, Jeremiah. There have been some uh, pretty big return punches from NVIDIA over the last month. Like, which there one have. has tempted you the most? Well, see, here's the thing. I've been very tempted by... Actually, the single card I'd be most tempted by is the R290. Because for price to performance, that card is insane. But 95 degrees Celsius is also insane. Um, no, see, the, the, the hard thing is, is like both my cards together, once overclocked, like they're still faster than a 780 Ti. Like there is no single card that has performance that can match the performance of these cards. So anything I get is a downgrade. Mm -hmm. I do like having two working monitors, though. So <laughs> I would probably go for two six or two seven sixties or two seven seventies. Ooh. The other possibility would be two six seventies because those are hitting under two hundred bucks refurbished. Yes. yes, they are. So a, a seven or six seventy. I mean, that's probably pretty equal to one of my seventy nine fifties. I would imagine because one of my seventy nine fifties when overclocked is pretty close to a six eighty. So I would imagine a six seventy. They pretty can close, overclock. Yeah. They could overclock a little bit, right? Yeah. I got a uh, 19% overclock out of my 680. So. Uh, did you get a 19% performance boost? I think I remember you, you got. Yeah, that. yeah. Yeah. Very noticeable. So I would, uh, I would probably do that. You know, I don't, th if I go to a single card, like the best one I could afford would probably be just a regular 780, which is a good card. I'm not like trying to <laughs> first world problems over here, but it, it'd be a, you, know, you know what I mean? It would be a good card, but it would be a significant decrease in performance. Right, but then right. again, like I, I do have kind of overkill performance. The reason I got the second card was like, all right, I'm set for like the next four years now, you know, <laughs> something to think about. <laughs> did he? Did he disappear? I think. I think his video card has just committed suicide after all that talk. <laughs> it just it went out with a bang. Do we still have Joel? <laughs> Is Joel still with me? Yeah, I'm still here. Can you hear me? Can, yeah, can I can hear you. How's it going, Joel? How are you feeling today? Yeah, I can hear hey, you. Hey, man. <laughs> Across the pond. <laughs> I, I think we have a slight delay here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, um. well, w without Skinner, I guess we could uh, start continuing talking about PS4. Or let's talk about that Daisy screenshot because I know he probably would probably stomp it right now. So let's Hello. talk about that. That hey, was back amazing. Phone call. <laughs> hey, Dave has. Hey, I'm back. What happened? Uh, nothing. What? We're continuing with Daisy. So just hold on for a second. Um, <laughs> wait, no. What's happening with Daisy? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have to talk about the screenshot. That was this is Joel actually. This, this is all Joel. Screenshot yeah. of Daisy I've seen so far. It is looked. It? Oh yeah, it is. It's definitely the best screenshot I've seen of the whole game. It is. It's a good screenshot. It, nice. it looks, it looks, it doesn't look like next gen, but honestly, it gave me a little bit of chills, like the division gave me chills. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Like it looked, it had to feel more like, I don't know, because the division kind of reminded me of like, you're playing as the Half-Life 2 people, like the, the force that's like attacking, you know? I yeah. The, I forget what they're called. Um, the Combine. 
Yeah, you're kind of, but who or whatever the- Who got a Half-Life fan on you? Get out, yo! Yeah. <laughs> Not the Combine, but the, the people that are, like, fighting beside you. Whatever they call oh, it. The, the Resistance. The Resistance, there you go. Of course they're called the Resistance. Yeah, yeah. The Resistance. <laughs> look, you, what are we like, going to call the, the people who are resisting the government? <laughs> I have an idea. Terrorists. <laughs> they're obviously- <laughs> We're going to call them domestic terrorists, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Can we be the Bandana Boys? No, that's a dumb name. <laughs> <laughs> I know. The Resistance. How just might work. Is that? I'm sorry. I'm being bitter. No. So anyway, back to the screenshot. Yeah, the screenshot. Did you did you look at it? Yeah, yeah, I saw it. I don't know why. It just it it, it just looks it looks very it apocalyptic. Looks, it looks good. It and like it, Daisy never really ever looks apocalyptic. So I'm I'm just like more trash, more trash. I think it was that broken car. I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> That's because Daisy is is Arma two with zombies. I know, I know, I know, and so uh, it's gonna blow my mind just seeing trash in the game. I don't know why, but I just want to see trash. <laughs> well, I mean, you do have that family reunion coming up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Would you like me to text you a picture of your mother? <laughs> She's right here. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremiah. There it is. That's all I ever wanted. <laughs> <laughs> anyways that's that's all about that i think if they i think if they desaturate the game just a tiny bit it would look really sweet i think it'd feel like the road i think i think that'd be awesome a little I bit of color correction if it was like cryengine what's really cool about cryengine's time of day system is you can essentially set a um a uh oh gosh what's the word joel for a, a frame a, a, a key a key yeah you can, you can set actually a key for every minute of the 24 hour day and completely change the lighting settings as the day goes on. So, like, midday could be, like, bright, saturated, happy. Yeah, but for, like, an sunsets, hour, and then it slowly gets yeah, different. It, it yeah, it gets darker. It gets desaturated. Like, it starts having, like, a bit of noise and, like, vignette going on. You could do all kinds of stuff, at least in other engines. So, that would be cool to see, like, where there are times where it's super happy and bright. And you're like, hey, this apocalypse is kind of survivable and kind of kind of not so bad. And then maybe a storm comes in and it's like, oh, crap, I'm in Stalker all of a sudden. I think it'd be very cool if like you could play one day and it's completely just regular. And then the next day you play, it's like all rainy, like the, the whole time you're playing. Like, it's just, yeah, yeah, that'd be really cool. Long I think we should rename systems. the Daisy section of the podcast to that would be cool to see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm done. I'm done. Also That's known all. as R slash Daisy. Hey yeah. guys, wouldn't it be cool if So uh back to back to my problem. Uh <laughs> are you, you gonna disconnect done... again on us, Jeremiah? No. <laughs> the the GPUs could hear me. Um, <laughs> That's what I said, is that they, they heard you and committed suicide. So I uh, what would you, I mean, I don't know, what do you guys think, honestly? Like, I, obviously, I switched from AMD to Intel earlier this year. I'm not opposed to switching systems. I've been very happy with AMD because for the money, their performance is insane. Um, I don't think this is an AMD-wide problem because I don't hear a lot of other people having this problem. Right. I think it's just, I think it's a peculiar little quirk of, my, of me trying to buy something outside the normal reference cards uh, um, and, and having problems. You hear I mean. I mean, you're probably gonna hit. You're gonna probably have a little bit of a slight less graphics boost. I don't think by much that you're gonna really but, notice but that much. But what card? What card should I get? Uh, I mean, if you were saying the six seven, I mean, like if price doesn't matter. I mean, you said the six seven users were doing really good. I think does how much Dave, power? You have a 680, right? How much yeah. power do you need to run two of those? They're surprisingly power efficient. I think you could uh, easily do it easily on 650 watts. I think so. Yeah, I think. Okay, I mean, two seventy nine fifties, I can run. I couldn't yeah. do. I could not do two seventy nine seventy gigahertz editions. That's what they say. At mm, least. Okay, you might be running the edge, but I could. I could look it up. But yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I could think about that. Um, okay, so time for Dave to have a a PC question. All right. So I've been budgeting and planning out for my next rebuild, which is going to be a partial rebuild. My initial plan was. Uh, keep all my hard drives because I have some nice SSDs and hard drives and all, and I just don't feel like redoing all my storage. I have tons of storage, but my case is very old. I need a new modern case with all the nice back cutouts and all. My Cosmos Cosmos 1000 is great, but it's missing a whole bunch of modern features. Yeah. Um, my motherboard, it's uh, what's the platform? LG, I think 1155. It's not. It, a, I don't think it's 1155, is it? If you no, or oh maybe gosh. first generation 1155, because if it's 1366? 1366, thank you. Yeah, that, that socket's <sighs> dead. Thank you, Intel. That's one thing AMD does right, okay? Yes. AMD's okay. like, hey, 
every process of release for the next six years. Same socket. You're good. Keep what you want. We love you. Please. This come is where back. I kind of screwed come myself. Back. Is <laughs> I built this system on the dead end of 1366. I mean, I this this platform was retired three months after I built this brand new computer. It served me well for the last almost yeah three and a half years now. But the problem is I don't have USB three. Uh, I don't have um, the new SATA ports. I have the limitation with the triple channel RAM and the certain things you have to do to get your CPU to line up correctly and just a lot of really 1366 platform weird issues. So my initial plan was new motherboard, uh, new RAM, um, and new CPU. And that would get me USB 3, a nice modern case, all that nice stuff. I'd finally be, be current and I think it would also last longer, like it wouldn't age as fast as this one did. Uh, the problem is that I would not really, I wouldn't really be getting a huge increase in performance for what I'd be paying. It would cost about 825 or so to do a rebuild, um, keeping my graphics card and my hard drives. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to pay 800 bucks for what would probably amount to like a 20% boost in performance and then just having all those nice new features. Like that's a pretty expensive upgrade. Yeah. So so here's what I, has been tempting me recently. Oh boy. So when I dropped my 480s back in I'm August, I'm just gonna get a PlayStation 4, <laughs> and we're gonna link two of them together. And that power of double next generation. <laughs> double next generation. <laughs> Joel <laughs> has convinced me. SLI PlayStation 4s. <laughs> Sorry. 1440p glory. <laughs> no, it'll it'll just be 1080p smooth, <laughs> with lots of aliasing. <laughs> But, um, so yeah, and also that would take me budgeting for it probably until February or March to actually build that. All right. So what's the plan? What's also been tempting me, and what I was saying was when I dropped my 480 SLI back in August and bought my single 680, I also got a PCI Express uh, USB 3 card, which is amazing. I have a whole bunch of USB 3 drives I use for recording and stuff. I can finally use them at USB 3 speeds. Mm -hmm. However, they cover up my second SLI slot. Mm. But 680s have been dropping on eBay. <laughs> what are they down to now? You can, if you're careful, find one for like 230 already. Oh, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to get two 680s. Because <laughs> I, I paid 285 for, for this that refurbished negativity. one. <laughs> so I'm like, oh man, I could get a second 680 for like 240 bucks ish have SLI again, and with this CPU overclocked to 4 gigahertz, I have an i7-930 at 4.0 gigahertz. That's a pretty, a pretty screaming CPU still. Um, hmm. But I would lose my USB 3, and I'd be once again adding cards onto this very dated system. That is my dilemma. I, um, <laughs> can I pipe in? Please. Yeah, Joel, save okay. me for myself. No. <laughs> I think in all... In all seriousness, I, I mean, the graphics you're going to get, I think, are going to matter so little. I mean, here's the thing. I know you do your recording and stuff, but now that Shadowplay is coming into being, you don't need to have as, as good as graphics as you need. To, you, know, or, you know, to try to keep it at 60 FPS, which I know you always try to keep on recording at Ultra or Beyond Ultra. <laughs> beyond um, Ultra. <laughs> yeah, I, you don't need that in any, as much anymore now with the Shadowplay. And so Except basically, right, I am no, getting frame drops below sixty at times. I, yeah, but I'm saying, is is that really worth getting rid of all the USB three? Like, I honestly think, eventually, like to get your new system, I think you should just wait for a little bit longer, let this system run into the ground, and then just go, <laughs> then go fresh, then go fresh. Yeah, here's my because, thoughts. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Joel. I thought no, you were no, done no, talking. I, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> if it felt like you were about to keep talking though no no but I, i'm done now <laughs> right. don't do it dave don't do it um so what well what i would suggest i have a 3570k overclocked joel has a 3770k and he's a little priss and hasn't overclocked it um because <laughs> he needs my help <laughs> i'm a little priss for not overclocking. do i give a crap <laughs> You I mean, know, I have a PS4. It's free. I have an Xbox You're leaving performance on the table. PS3. You're leaving performance on the table. You got <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saving a little room for later. <laughs> so, uh, Dave, <laughs> look up all of the CPU-heavy benchmarks you can find. Let's mm -hmm. run them on both our computers. I'm betting 
my mine will probably be a little bit faster. Yeah. But you do have eight threads. So I'm betting it's not going to be a big difference. I well, be... I, I was going to get a 4770K. Oh, no, that's what you're going to get. I'm saying, my, but for gaming and everything oh, oh, but right. heavy video rendering, my CPU is still awesome. Like, and still... that, that's actually one last point I was going to make, too, is that I do do a lot of 3D. I actually, while this podcast was going here at the beginning, I was rendering an intro out of Cinema 4D in the background, and it was cranking it out. But, I mean, I, I do really work the CPU as far as rendering and 3D stuff goes. Mm-hmm. So maybe I would see more than a 20% increase with a, a, a more modern platform. And 16 gigs of RAM versus uh, yes, 6. 16 I do, gigs of RAM would be awesome. I'm limited Trust to me. 6 gigs it of is. triple channel right now. I'm betting, I'm betting if you come up with as many CPU benchmarks as you can, I will happily run them on my computer. You can run them okay. on yours. And we can compare them. Because say max, you're going to gain like 20% over my processor if you go to a 4770. Okay. Probably. So... If you're within spit and distance of my processor, that's not worth $800. It's just not. Now, the issues I do see with your build are uh, it's super loud, which is dumb. <laughs> uh, I don't know why your case is so loud. It doesn't make any sense. I have two graphics cards in my case. My case is much smaller, and it's quiet. It's because to make room for my, my water cooler and my extra, my bajillion add-on cards, I had to open up the front of my case. My case is meant to have a, a door that clasps over oh, the front. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the door's gone. I opened the entire front up, and I have multiple fans in the front adding front air intake now. That was not designed to be used like that for this Cosmos case. I think your big weaknesses are memory mm -hmm. uh, and USB 3, most likely. I'm betting your processor is still current enough that you would get yeah. a little bit of performance, but not anywhere close to what you're spending. Unfortunately, since it is Intel and the socket's dead, there's <laughs> no way to upgrade... There's no affordable way to upgrade your, you know, to USB 3. Well, you, you've got USB 3. There's no way to upgrade your RAM yeah. really on this platform. Is, is it triple channel? I would have to get four gig sticks, which are expensive, even used, very expensive. Four gig sticks of triple channel? Is that yes. what it is? Yeah, those, see, those, those never really caught on. They were around for kind of the one chipset, and then just dual yep. channel was really just the way to go. People went back to that. Um, yep. Yeah, I don't, this is like... I really can't figure out what's the best option. I mean, I, I really can't like afford ride, it right now either. Riding it but. into the ground is probably the best thing to do. Yeah. Um. I mean, because you're still getting you're getting good performance. Uh, Just with with drops, like I do get random drops. Like Battlefield will drop to the 30s, like for a second, and then back up to oh, mine know, does that, again. dude. That's Battlefield. Well, yeah. <laughs> I can, I can run Battlefield at like 120, and then sometimes <laughs> it drop. Then sometimes it drops to 100. Sometimes it drops to 30. That's just Battlefield. Yeah. yeah. Don't try to fix that problem. That's not going to happen. <laughs> what makes me so angry is is that by jumping onto the end of this dead platform, my i7-930, which has served me well, and that I paid 300 bucks for, is now worth about 60 bucks used. Because mm. no one wants it anymore. That's true, because one of the good things about upgrading is you can sell your old gear to offset the cost, but you're not going to... I mean, triple channel, 1366. For the your RAM actually is still worth quite a bit. Just How much is that worth used? I bet about your 120 to 130. For all of it? For the six gigs, yeah. Okay, because I'm betting your CPU and processor together are probably like a hundred bucks if you're lucky. My CPU and processor together. Sorry, CPU and motherboard. Oh, the motherboard actually I've seen go for anywhere from between eighty and, and one twenty. So the motherboard is okay. actually worth more than the than the CPU. Still, it's you're a, looking at le less than two hundred though. It's not that. It's not yeah, good. well, not counting the RAM. Um, a second six eighty would be good. You need about eight hundred and fifty watts to run it. I looked up, so it looks like I'm not doing that. That's exactly what I have. And mine ran two 480s, so... <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I think I'd wait it out. I would not give up USB 3 for a second graphics card, especially because the main game you play is so poorly optimized that I don't think you'd get as significant of a difference as you think you would. Right. Um, I mean, I, I'm not blown away by my, my performance in Battlefield 4. Um, I mean, I'm frustrated most of the time when I'm playing it, like the performance is just not that great. And I have, it's really variable is the problem. It's very variable. And I have one of the most powerful GPU setups you can get. I mean, yeah, like two seven eighty TIs. I'm not talking like insane stuff, but I've got a really powerful setup. Um, mine is like the monitors turning themselves off and other things, <laughs> but the setup is really powerful and I'm, I'm not thrilled with it. So I don't think getting a second card is going to make you that happy. <laughs> probably. Yeah. Yeah. For, for battlefield. And for probably, I'm guessing most other games, you have no problems running anything else you want with a 680. Basically, yeah. 
yeah, especially overclocked, nineteen percent. Um, I'm very close to a uh, a seven seventy. Yeah, yes, a seven seventy. I'd ride it into the ground. All right, so I that's think. two votes for riding it into the ground. Just keep yeah, saving just money. To- keep saving money. Like go until it's just it's you just can't take it anymore, and then you'll have like fifteen hundred bucks to go crazy with. Yeah, because that's honestly what I did. I just kept on saving money. Yeah. So I could just get something really awesome because the last time I built a computer, it was like, I don't know, it was like 2009 or so, I think it was 2009. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I bought my computer, it wasn't a 2009 computer. It was probably like a 2008 computer. Yeah, it was. So this time I wanted to buy, oh, I want to buy an actual 2013 computer, you know? Nice. So. And you did. Your computer is very nice. Yeah. And I, I want to I I see you happy, Dave. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for talking me down. I was right there on the ledge about to jump off into oblivion. See, guys, it's not just you, dear listeners. Uh, even the casual <laughs> shenanigans gaming crew has those moments of weakness. I believe, what did I <laughs> Skype you earlier this year? I was like, I'm going to do it when I was considering <laughs> Intel. There was that yeah. one late night. I was like, it's past 1230 a.m. This is a good time to be shopping for computer parts. I was parts. not helpful, though. I was just like... Oh yeah, you're gonna do it, huh? Do it. <laughs> do it now. <laughs> Join I am, us. I am the I am the worst on that. People are like, I don't know if I should do it. I'm like, you should do it. It's so much money. I'm like, dude, money. <laughs> <laughs> Money's just made up. Um so we are forty seven minutes into the podcast. We have not hit either of our two main topics. Everyone ready to just to buckle in and plow ahead? Let's do this yep. thing. All right, let's do it. So, uh, oh, let us know in the comments. Let us know what you think both Dave and I should do about our respective computer situations. Uh, any of you guys see awesome deals on GPUs? Send them my way. I'm willing to consider many options. Um, <laughs> just a thought. If I wait till some of the non-reference coolers come out for R290s, I can get an R290, a single one, overclock it a bit, and I will be at uh, close to the performance of both my cards. Probably like 15% less than the performance of both cards now. Nice. That's not bad. But two six eighties would be pretty awesome. Uh, all right. So PlayStation Four it released recently. If you have not gotten one, you'll be waiting for a while because two point three million people are waiting on their pre-orders to be fulfilled. The PlayStation Four sold one million units, making it the biggest console launch in history. If I'm remembering oh, correctly. Oh man. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like the I think the most recent, like the last generation of launches, they were like two or three hundred thousand units launch week. Man. Uh, and the PlayStation 4 crushed it. And this is an example of marketing done well. From the very first moment they talked about the PS4, through E3 up till now, Sony has been knocking it out of the park, and that's what happens. They put the gamers first, uh, they pulled no punches, they went real hard for Xbox, and <laughs> they are doing awesome uh, so far. There have been those the complaints about the blue light of death, people are trying to call it. It's not that at all. Like a tiny, tiny percentage of consoles have yeah, been dead out of the box. Yeah, it's way less than even last time. So, But that, that always around. happens. Like when you order electronics, yeah. there's always like a 1% chance that it's just going to be dead just because there's so many complex parts. So that's and not... And pushing this one so hard right off the, off the gate too. Like it's, it's new hardware. But yeah. Dave and I can't really talk about a PlayStation 4 because we don't have one. I'm considering getting one. But, Joel, you got a PS4, uh, Yoshi, friend of the podcast, got a PS4, and we have a listener who got a PS4 who sent in some thoughts about it. So, Joel, why don't you take us through, like, how has it been so far? It, dude, it's been amazing. Like, it seriously is incredible. Like, way better than I thought it was going to be. Like, if it was a scale from 1 to 10, for my, like, expectations, I had it about, like, a, a 9. Pretty much, I was. I had. I oh, had huge expectations. Low, huh? <laughs> no, no, it's not low. My expectations it was, were like no, a I'm nine. Saying, <laughs> I'm saying it was high expectations, and then when I got it, it was full ten. Like I was like, wow, the features actually work the way they say they work. Because I've seen a lot of E3s. Trust me, this is not my first one, and getting my first console and stuff. So I was like, I know when they say, oh, it's supposed to do this. It's right. probably not going to do it. Oh yeah, but yeah. yeah Everything, I mean, when I got it, I didn't have any problems updating it to the first software thing to be able to connect on PSN. It worked extremely smooth right from the box. Um, yeah, the system itself, just it's really cool. It's extremely small. It's, it's really, really small, just super thin. The LED strip on the top is really nice because the colors do change and they let you know whether you have, you have updates, there's new programs installed. It's just the whole system is just sleek. It boots up within like 14, I think it's like 12 to 14 seconds. Like it is really snappy. 
Nice. And then you leave it on. And it's funny, I keep getting, I, I keep actually turning it all the way off and I keep forgetting, oh yeah, I can just put it into standby mode, kind of like an iPhone or a, a phone. I was like, oh yeah, I should do that. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> starting to get into that because I, I, I turned it on the other day. I was like, hey, there's updates. It said it was going to install it for me. Oh wait, I turned it completely off. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's really cool. Uh, I see, I, I'm, I'm a huge Xbox 360 fan for uh, the controller. Absolutely mm-hmm. one of my favorite ones. And... The PS3, I was never a huge fan of it. I just thought the controller was just kind of, I don't know, it felt cheap. And I, I, I don't know, I didn't like the feeling of it. But the new controller is really, it it's definitely is the next level of controllers. Like the touchpad really, is pretty amazing. Like I haven't actually gotten to use it, but the, the texture is really hard to describe. It's like this anti-friction touch surface. It feels like really good. I was impressed with just the, the feel of the touchpad. Yeah, it feels like actually like the back of the Vita, if anyone has a Vita. The back, hmm. It's kind of like a matte kind of finish. But uh, it, all the buttons, the, the clickiness, I guess, and the, just the locations of the buttons Technical are technology. really extremely well done. <laughs> like, it's just very natural. Like, I, I, I found myself like, you know, you, you kind of go to for, search for a start button and you click the, the big pad and it goes to the map. So in Assassin's Creed 4, you're scrolling around using the map. You can either use the touchpad or the joystick and... Oh, it's just, it's awesome. And it's really fast. Being able to go from a program, so I was playing Assassin's Creed, and I was like, oh, I kind of want to install Netflix because I forgot to install it. You press the, you press the PlayStation button, it goes back to the menu like that. And then I installed Netflix. I didn't have to exit my game. Like the game is still in the background. I could install Netflix. What is that? I could finish. What? Nothing. Go ahead. Uh, (laughs) So I started watching something on Netflix, which was the show Hoarders. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, oh my gosh, those people are crazy. And then I was like, okay, I'm done with this. Press the button, you double tap, and it switches back to the last opposite app you've been using. I'm back in the game. And it was just it was just cool because it worked just like they said it was. So yeah. Dude, you should get it. So and then I just got a Vita and I've been trying out the streaming. Does it already work? Holy crap. Holy crap. It works <laughs> really well. He's I was not out, surprised. What games like, have you been playing it? Like what uh, you well, I mean, the, I, the games I have on my PS4 are Lego Marvel, which is awesome. I got that for joy. I have Call of Duty Ghosts, and I have Assassin's Creed 4. And then I have the game Flower, which came free on the PlayStation Network thing. So the PlayStation Plus is actually a freaking good deal because you literally get four to five games a month. Like, it's mm-hmm. ridiculous. So it's cool. But check this out, right? So I have, I have it on here if you, can, if you can see it. But I'm holding up the Vita right now. I see a clock. And yeah, so. It says, please wait. Oh, yeah, it's, it's reconnecting back to my PS4. But, um, yeah, so you just click remote play. And it just does a quick little sync. And obviously, this is, I mean, I wasn't expecting this to even work day one. I thought this was going to be like following year. It was going to work. So, you know, it, it's to, to do the little connect sync thing. It's, it's a little bit slow. But I can imagine in the next like couple months as they're working on this, it's going to be pretty awesome. But like, seriously, like, I don't know if I can like move around. But I'm conne- I'm like it's like one to one downstairs. Oh wow, yeah, pretty slick. So, so I'm actually controlling it, and amazing, it actually uses the mic on this PS Vita as like it's using the camera mic to control hmm. PlayStation. I'm like, that's Holy cool. Crap. And so I have up here Joel's just- PlayStation explode, <laughs> <laughs> explode, no. Xbox. So, like- <laughs> Look up porn. Wait, you know how it works? <laughs> wow. I don't know if this will work, but like here's here's Lego Marvel like loading up, and I I can tell because I mean I'm a hardcore gamer in the sense of I played a lot of games like I can tell there's a tiny bit of lag there's a little bit like I think playing something like Call of Duty or Battlefield on there like multiplayer yeah it's you're definitely not gonna play as well uh, as on your computer but I'd say the lag is so close that I think in the next probably f- like five like probably half a year or a year they're gonna u- update this thing like crazy and it's gonna be a, a lot better. But games like like Assassin's Creed and this, I was playing. <laughs> I feel retarded, but I'm sitting on my couch playing Lego uh, Assassin's Creed on my Vita while the screen's like my 50 inches right in front of me, <laughs> and I'm like, "Yay! Wait, I've been playing for 40 yeah. minutes." I'm like, "You're such a hardcore I'm st- gamer." <laughs> I know. I'm like, maybe maybe I should maybe I should uh, actually play on the big screen, but uh, it's just cool. I'm trying to see if I can load it up, but like, it's so neat. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty impressed, but. I mostly got this for joy. This is not for me. I got it for joy. <laughs> sure, joy. sure. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> my wife loves all playing your gadgets them. just just for for everybody else. Yeah, I know. See, my wife, she always likes to accompany in the office when I'm working on wedding videos or such and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. No, so she always just on her she phone does, or she like she's just doing there, something, she's you, know? Bored, you know. But now, she, instead of being downstairs al- by herself playing games, she could be sitting up here on the Vita playing a Lego. Problem than a, uh... Oh, rather my wife just being bored sitting downstairs by herself like a loser. <laughs> No, well, I'm up here hanging out with the guys, having a good time. I'm saying if I'm using my computer to edit, she can't really. No, use I, I understand, to Joel. I'm just making fun. No, of no, you. I'm re-explaining it. I'm yeah, re-explaining no, I, it. No, I got that. I, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's about it. Now there's there's a clone of you on this. Dang it. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what's going on. Um, you should get yourself, Matt. <laughs> no all right, guys scrap scrap all that advice from the entire podcast forget all of it just buy max look I'm, at that, uh, that is- uh, i'm not gonna do that so that that is captain america and mr fantastic or stretchy arm dude but okay the coolest thing about this is you're looking That's at it going nice. holy crap like <laughs> these are really high-end graphics on a portable so it it like tricks you into thinking like how is this even working so I'm okay, excited so, for Steambox now, too. So, Joel, now, obviously, your PS4 is broadcasting the, the video and audio feeds from the main console, right? No, it's going up through my network. It's going th- oh, it's, it's through your it's network. It's connected Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi downstairs, upstairs, to the Vita. So it uses your local wireless network? Yeah. What kind of compression are we talking about? Is it like H.264 on the fly, or? He doesn't Honestly, know. I don't know what compression it is. It is on the fly, though. Jeez. Yeah. I will well, find I mean, your small little house and I will burn it. <laughs> It'll move. You'll never find it. <laughs> it won't take very long. When you think you found me, you found where I was. <laughs> now, the crazy thing is I am streaming uh, this I am streaming this right now while I'm still streaming with you guys. So it's pretty incredible. Like there's no like every once in a while you see a little tiny digital artifact, but that's it. Like it looks straight like 1080p or something. It looks really good. Well, your local network really would not affect your your internet streaming abilities. Your local oh, bandwidth okay. is so yeah. much higher. Yeah, you got plenty to spare. Okay, awesome. But that's that's well, still pretty awesome that it works so well. And now I'm hang gliding down from the Avengers base, the floating air base. Yeah. Tell us what else you're doing. I'm excited, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Joel's I'm really excited dedicated for, to this podcast. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited for the Steam Box too because that's gonna make it so much easier to use my computer up here, down on my TV downstairs. And that's you know, actually honestly, made to I, function on a big screen where PCs yeah, yeah. are generally not. <laughs> I'm going to try it because I'm actually having some bandwidth problems with my in-home network setup. Um, full HD at 60 hertz is actually causing occasionally some uh, flickering on my TV just because that's so much signal to pump. It, it's HDMI being converted to two lines of Cat6 and then back to HDMI. And full HD occasionally just has some choking issues with how long my run of Cat 6 is. What do you mean you're going to try it? I, I, I'm like, Finn, what do you mean? Well, I, I mean, I have, I have in-wall HDMI that runs to Cat oh, 6. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's hardwired, and up until recently, it was working really, really well, but I am having some bandwidth problems. So I'd like to see, like, this, the Steambox version of that. Like, how bad is the compression? Yeah. How responsive is it? Because one nice thing, even if I have to knock the games down to 720 to play them on the TV... I have got that that USB hub behind my TV, and I just plug it in my wireless mouse and keyboard, and the responsiveness is like I'm sitting here at my desk. It's incredibly responsive, and if Steambox can come close to that at full HD, I'll definitely use that. Well, if this is any indication, I absolutely, absolutely will. It, it, there's <laughs> uh, there's the no future. doubt in my mind. Yeah, seriously, like there's no way. Like I think you know, obviously there's gonna be hiccups in the for the first year. Yeah, they're gonna get it down pretty fast. And oh man, dude, that's gonna be really exciting. Man, this is this is so cool. I think Jeremiah's back log- with this, possibly. I I am back. Yeah, I've been back for a minute. I've just been been chilling. Um, I'm gonna read the thoughts of uh Trinidad Winston. He's got that's his gamer tag. He has another name. Um, <laughs> Trinidad Winston. That's awesome. <laughs> so his frustrations. Uh, anyone who's ever had a PlayStation Three, they'll know that it's update galore. Yep, that is definitely the case. Uh, whether or not because it's and i lost the feed so i'll wait and he died again i'm gonna guess that he what was the question was i'm just gonna guess 
is if the PS4 has like crazy amount of updates like the PS3 maybe. Yeah, I'll think that's that's probably it. Um every uh yeah, and since I've had both the PS3 yeah, it took took forever to update anything because what it's it has to download it, then install it like and it just took forever to do it because the network on PlayStation network for PS3 was really bad. Um and for some reason whatever the Wi-Fi you know connection is in the PS3 it was always a lot slower than the Xbox for some reason. Mm-hmm. But for this one once you set it up, it's in idle mode at all times. So it will download all the updates for you, all the game updates, everything for you, and install them if you, once nice. you leave it on. And it's much quicker because there's a dedicated uh, CPU in there that's yeah. dedicated specifically for online download and background stuff. Because one thing I was very curious about is I, you know, I uploaded some Assassin's Creed footage, and it does it so quickly behind the screens. I thought it was going to do it after I exited the game, but no, it's doing it in the background. And it uploads really cool. quick. Yeah. So I was just impressed at how fast, like, how fast it actually did that. So, oh, man, this is really cool. I'm trying to figure out how to log out of my my profile so that Joy can log in and play on her uh, mode of Lego on here. I haven't figured out how to do that yet. But okay, you can actually start up the PS4 from idle by using the Vita. So if you're yeah. in bed and you wake up and you're like, oh, I want bacon in in bed and don't want to move, you can literally power the PS4 on via Vita and start a game. That's awesome. That's cool. I'm never going to leave. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> so, um, what have you Joel, guys been talking I'm, about in my absence? Uh, I, you mainly. Actually. Uh, should I finish reading these thoughts or have you guys moved on? We actually, can, can, I want to see if my guess was, I was, I was guessing was the question, does the PS4 still have insane updates? Yes. I answered it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Joel's got this. Joel's what? got this. New host right here. Right here. <laughs> guys, Yo. first my graphics cards and then you kicked me out. What, what am I supposed to do? Look, Jeremiah, I know that you so founded this podcast. Next you get all your idea, and you made all the artwork for it, and you're you do so all the mean. editing for it, but yeah. you're gone. I'm so sad. <laughs> the sadness is overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he says, uh, another thing irks him, um, installing games being mandatory. He's all for installing a game to cut down on loading times, but the PS4 is 500 gigs, and then you have the operating system, and the first three games he got were 35, 39, and 46 gigs to install. Woo. That kind of puts a significant dent in his storage space. Um, he's obviously going to get more games. He doesn't want to be crunched for memory. Um, those are his only frustrations so far. So the first week overall has been good. He always had Xbox 360. Did he die again? He probably Hello? did. Joel, can you hear me? Joel? Are you out there, Joel? We might as well just take this whole podcast over and just... Yeah. We could call it the Dave and Joel Show. Today on the Dave and Joel Show, <laughs> we're going to be talking about Daisy <laughs> for an hour. <laughs> All right. Yeah, wow, I just did a creepy laugh. It was like... Uh. <laughs> That was a pretty sadistic laugh, yeah. Guys, I think we can we just switch to a Skype audio call. This is dumb. I honestly, we're we're at uh, we're at an hour. Should we just put off our topic again? I mean, no, I know we said and... we were going to talk about it. Let's talk I mean, about it. We're kind we're kind of close to the end, anyways. I think we can barrel through it. Just start yeah. the question before you log out, and we'll continue. No, it. can can we redo? Can we resume this on Skype? Oh, what about our God. live listeners out there? This I'm fellas. sorry, I'm sorry, live listeners, but I, I, it's dropping me like every two minutes. This is dumb. Thanks, Google. Uh, okay, so just keep recording and just switch over to Skype. Yeah, I'll switch over to Skype. All right. So basically, guys, for the exciting conclusion to this long rambling podcast, be sure to tune in. Yeah. 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 Sorry for the <laughs> Don't forget to problems. buy your NVIDIA cards. Don't you dare try <laughs> Crossfire because it sucks. <laughs> all right. So uh, I've just made notes so we can cut all that junk out. Um, <laughs> Quarantine's bad, kids. End of podcast. No. All right, uh, so the last thoughts that Trinidad Winston had on the PS3 or PS4 are, first impressions are great, the gameplay is great, he's playing NBA 2K14, you can see the sweat on the guys as the game progresses in the Battlefield game. The Battlefield campaign, he actually caught himself reaching out to save a guy who was falling. Um, that sounds like you have maybe some attachment issues, I don't know if that's the <laughs> graphics, but... That's why I buy next-gen consoles, is for more sweaty guys. <laughs> mm, no, no, no. <laughs> so real. Obviously, with such a new platform, there isn't going to be a myriad of games available right off the bat, but the ones he has, he will definitely keep them occupied for a while. Uh, and he says, thanks and bye. Um, so, yeah. I mean, is that enough talk about the PS4 for now? 
Yes. Have I, have I convinced you enough to buy one? I, I want one. It's just a question of... I'm probably going to wait till there's a good Vita bundle, probably like in a year or so. Oh, a PS4 Vita bundle? You think they'll do that? I would assume so. So like $600 one or a or $500 bundle, maybe? Uh, 600 I think, would be too much. I mean, the the... I think five hundred or five fifty, maybe. Yeah. All right. It's true. So, um, let's move on to our topic of the evening. The topic of the evening is torrenting, and uh, this is an interesting topic and can be a little bit divisive, especially for PC gamers. Um, now, right off the bat, torrenting itself is not illegal. Torrenting is just peer-to-peer file transferring. Um, it's just a way of sending files back and forth. So it's very important that everyone understands that before we start so there are no like misconceptions. Yeah, the concept of torrenting is used for legitimate things as well. Like There are some games that release their patches over torrents. Right. For example. So Does anyone do that anymore? Yeah, it's actually very popular. Uh, I think uh, Planetside releases their patches on torrents. They're also available in the in-game client though, right? Yeah, yeah, it's just... Oh, okay, uh, I thought it was, some, like, solely. <clears throat> no, no, no. Uh, for some people, though, torrenting can be, like, incredibly fast. Like, it, it'll just... It'll saturate your connection and get you the files much faster than the, oh, the game company don't servers. don't I know. <laughs> um, so, yeah. But we've, we've had someone ask us, what is our opinion on torrenting? They say they haven't paid for a game in, like, five years. Um, isn't torrenting Ouch. awesome? You can get everything for free. So there can be a lot of differing opinions on this, but does one of you Sinners. guys does one of you guys want to go first with your thoughts on torrenting? Mind if I go first? Yeah, go for go it. Go for it, Dave. I'm reading so, um, graphics card reviews, so you just go right ahead. Yeah, I see how it is. I'm not important. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kind of kidding. So back in the day when I was a a poor high schooler and bought like two games a year, uh, I torrented a lot, mainly just because, like like I said, I was had like no entertainment budget but phil still felt like i i deserved i guess for some reason to play all the latest games so just about anything single player i would torrent i mean i would i would torrent everything and occasionally it would be just to say like hey will this game actually run on my system because i also didn't have the greatest computer in the world but a lot of the times that would lead to oh well it does work on my system might as well go ahead and finish it um, but moving into into college, uh, what was was basically right around the time that a lot of games were going into a um, an online login system, and that was right about the same time, two thousand six, two thousand seven, that Steam was really taking off. And if I could name two things that absolutely stopped my torrenting years and years and years ago, it would be number one, I became an adult with a job and actually was able to budget and and plan to actually pay for my entertainment. And got some self-control where I didn't try to play everything that was new. And I picked my favorites to play. And then Steam led the charge of digital sales. And now you have Humble Bundles, you have Steam, you have Origin Sales, you have Green Man Gaming, and just a bajillion other options. So I have my entertainment budget now. I can pick, all right, I want Bioshock Infinite when it comes out. I want Battlefield 4 when it comes out. But I can't afford Assassin's Creed 4. Like, I can't budget for that this month, too, because I already got Battlefield 4. Well, that's okay. I'll toss it onto my Steam wish list, and next year, when it's, you know, twelve forty nine on Steam on the summer sale, I can grab it then, and it'll be within my budget. Um, and, and in addition, in the last five years or so, I've really been working my 3D artwork towards joining the games industry, and kind of had to step back there and think, too, like, why would I keep torrenting games? Like this is going to be my my livelihood, hopefully one day. And you know these these artists and programmers and developers are pouring insane amounts of hours and effort into these games. And just because you have the ability to acquire them for free does not give you the right to do so. And I, I think those three things, my adult job more or less, <laughs> um, modern PC game sales, and then trying to get into the industry, I really cannot remember the last game that I torrented. Um, it might have been three or four years ago, and it actually was a legitimate, like, I'm going to see if this actually works on my system. And, oh, it was Skyrim, actually. I downloaded Skyrim first, uh, played it for a couple of days because there were some serious performance issues. Um, it actually worked well for me, and so I went out and bought it from Best Buy of all places. 
That was like the last box game I bought. But yeah, that's my <laughs> torrenting story. Joel? Uh, no, what, what was your... I don't think you ever said your specific opinion, though, on it, Dave. You kind of told your backstory, but... Right, right. Uh, what, what is your final... Like, is, is downloading... Is torrenting a game... Is that something good to do, or is that is that illegal? Is that is it stealing? Well, well, torrenting a, a game specifically, yes, that is a, a violation of copyright, which is a violation of the law technically. But I think morally, it, it's also a, a pretty bad thing to do. I, I mean, like I said, I kind of felt like when I was younger, like, well, everyone else is playing these new games, like, why shouldn't I? Well, if you can't afford them, like, you don't need a game. It's not food. You know, you're not gonna die if you don't have it save up your money, wait for a sale, and, and do the responsible thing. Uh, especially with, like I said, modern sales, there really are no excuses left for non-stop torrenting. I would make an exception, though, for, like I said, the last game that I, I torrented was, was Skyrim to try it out. Like, if you are legitimately just going if to try really it out... If that's really the reason. If that's yeah, really if that's the really the reason. And you have to have some self-control, because it was tempting, once I got Skyrim working, like, hey, this works pretty great. I could have just said... Might as well keep playing, but I actually went out and bought the game. And of course, later on with the uh, the Steamworks support and all the mods and all, I was very glad that I did that. Besides moral reasons, just for for technical reasons, for all the patches and the and the uh, the development kit and all, were really cool to have with the retail version. But but yeah, I think the only excuse you can make is if you want to test a new game to see if it works on your system, and you need to have self control, and it needs to be an actual test, and, and that's it. Like make sure it works, and then move on to the actual copy and even then be like don't don't make like you're doing this totally normal thing like you're still stealing a copy of the game even if you're just kind of borrowing it you know don't act like you're doing this totally normal thing okay that's Joel? me mm -hmm. um yeah okay so i i yeah i same with dave i used to do it a long time ago because i honestly had no idea it was something bad to do eventually I, I thought it was literally like people actually putting their games up there because <laughs> we, we had we, 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 got, we got Internet up late in the game. Right. And then as I started realizing this is actually wrong, I was like, this is not good. Um, but my my idea on it was it kind of reminds me of like when you go into one of those stores that have those big buckets that have like peanuts or like bulk candy. Mm -hmm. the, the 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 people at the store are probably not going to freak out and like call the cops on you for stealing like an M&M from there or like tasting a little one. That's, but it, it is still wrong. Like I'm saying downloading games that just, that, that come out or anything like that. Um, it is completely wrong because it's not, it's not yours. Like even for trying it out, unless they put a demo out, it's still not allowed. I, I think the only time that it ever should be actually permitted is if the game companies actually put a copy and there's a bunch of game companies still that actually put a copy on there that's a demo that allow you to download it via that. So I think if there's a demo and you're downloading the demo torrenting of it, but I'd say still downloading the game, I think that's still wrong because it you can go to the store. If you can torrent it, why don't you just go to the store and get it? Because you can some games you can still take back. You still actually can take back. I know from GameStop they give you a week to take the game back. Um they you're don't sell obviously PC games anymore though, do they? Uh, some some do. I mean, really? Walmart does. Target does. I mean, uh, GameStop because they've got the return policy. Uh, I don't. I honestly, I don't know about that. I haven't okay. bought a PC game from uh from there for a long time. But okay. I mean, you can still you can still torrent Xbox games and PS3 games. So, you know, I mean, like you you can go to an outlet, you can buy the game, and it's also it's also your problem mm -hmm. in a way. If you buy this thing, you kind of accept the risks of it going to be either a bad game that you just straight don't like that it maybe doesn't work like. Okay, so it is. I mean, it's going to be their fault, but it's not. It doesn't give you the right to be able to like. Oh, I'm going to try this out because obviously you're just putting in temptation. <laughs> <I guess it's, laughs> just putting temptation in front of yourself to say, oh, maybe I'll keep it a little bit longer. Maybe I'll keep it a little longer. I think it's a very extremely bad habit because honestly, I, I'd say 99.9% .9 of people who do it are probably never ever going to get caught. But there's been several cases that I've heard of, and I've actually known a few people personally. That is, they've actually gotten caught and they've gone to jail and it's really, really bad. you know people what? have gone to jail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not I'd say more like acquaintances. Uh, there's some people from actually homeschool that I did. Well, sure they <laughs> years are ago. now. Wait, what? So your brothers and sisters? No, 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 no. Well, you knew them from homeschool. Sorry, sorry, sorry right? Yeah, <laughs> Home, sorry. Homeschool groups like people. Anyways, yeah. Okay, I was so, gonna say uh, that. That's uh, that's a little interesting. <laughs> He's like, yeah, my brother. 
<laughs> you serving time? <laughs> no, uh, Never saw uh, him again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've known some people, and yeah, it's. I mean, it's really bad. It's. It's. It's literally. It's like one of those things where yeah, it probably will never ever happen because it takes more time on their part to try to do anything than it is for them to say, please don't do this. Cause there'd be a zillion cases every day. I mean, they'd be going everywhere. <laughs> right. I mean, the NSA is already doing that for us right now, but <laughs> which I'm sure it'll ramp so up to brave. being just a morning activity of like, Oh, here comes the NSA, honey. <laughs> you guys eating breakfast? Oh yes, what, we are. are you sure it? you're not torrenting. <laughs> what on <laughs> earth is going on? I feel like we took a left turn somewhere. <laughs> A left turn at Joel, as uh, usual. I would just basically say, like, just because it's something. <laughs> basically, that... what I'm trying to say with the NSA checking on your breakfast is. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've set the stage. Go ahead. I'm, I'm basically saying that just because it's something that pretty much you'll never, pretty much ever get caught. Just because you can. Yeah. Just because you've done this, it doesn't right. It's not all right. Because, I mean, put yourself in the shoes of somebody making a game. Read some of the articles of people going, oh crap. Like, I spent years of my life building something. And then it just gets torrented and they're like, wow, you know, let's say it's not a great game. It's like a, it, it reviews at like a 70, you know, where you're like, ah, I kind of want to try this game, but it's not, it's not good enough to buy. Well, now, I mean, that person has spent years of their life trying to, trying to catch someone to say, Hey, buy my game. It's $10 or whatever it is. If you pay $10 for it, you probably would give it a little bit longer chance than if you torrented and be like, eh, I don't want to play toss in the trash. So th that's such a quick way of diluting someone's you know years of work whether you know whether it's it's an ea that sometimes can be kind of douchebaggy about it or it's a person who lives in a basement or wherever working with three of his buddies working on a game for years so i would just try to remember that because it doesn't seem yeah, very the, big now but remember that there there are real people behind these games even if you don't always agree with their decisions they're still real people with like real bills and real needs and a lot of hard work and effort that goes into these things. Yeah. And, and I think the only thing I was, was going to say is I know there's a lot of other articles and there's different people that say, oh, well, you know, torrenting is also really good for certain games and stuff. And I don't mind people torrenting my music because eventually they buy it and stuff. And, you know, I think that's I think that's cool because it works, but it does not work for most people. That, that's right. a very, if very artist, small percentage. If an artist so, is the sole yeah. owner of their work and they say they don't mind you torrenting it, then fine. Go ahead. Um, but most of the time, like an artist could even say they're fine with people torrenting their stuff. Well, they're not, they don't own all of their music. Like they're not the only person who has skin in the game. Yeah. So that's something else to keep in mind. I, I just, I wouldn't use that as an excuse to be like, well, you know, some people, I think even Notch said from, uh, Minecraft, who was like, he was almost defending torrenting in the way that's like, you know, people can try it out. It's like demoing. It's like, yeah, it might work for you because you already have millions of dollars and it, it did work. Like some people really love it that eventually they want to buy it. And it's the same thing that actually Gabe Newell says at Valve that to fight piracy, you can't put just more DRM, more DRM. He says you have to make sure that the product you give the people feels better than if you could just steal it like you, be, you like the people who steal programs would be like man i'm jealous of dave because dave actually bought it and he gets all these extra features because he purchased it whereas since i didn't i'm losing out on some features but still i think it's, it's still wrong i think mm -hmm. but not to like straight up judge because i mean i've done it in the past now but i haven't done it for so long now and it and it really feels good you you feel good about purchasing a game because you know hey the money went to those people even if it's a ea <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's still developers in studios, even behind EA. Remember that, yeah, guys. Yeah, even yeah. Sims and, and EA is an EA is a giant soulless. EA logo. <laughs> EA isn't soulless. They've lasted this long because they're ruthless in business. Yes. And they can be as so, ruthless as they want to. They're making Battlefront. Well, I mean, they like. <laughs> there's plenty of things I don't like that EA does, and I've been very vocal about it. But the reality is, if it wasn't for them, a lot of your favorite franchises would no longer exist. Because they don't play the nice guy. They play the successful guy. And the successful guy isn't everyone's favorite, but the successful guy is still making games 20 years later. So that's something important to keep in mind. All right, so my thoughts on it. I, I largely agree with you guys. And are you guys still there? Yes. All right. No, we left. We do. Well, after, you have the floor, Jeremiah. We're all ears. And well, stuff. no, no. As, as poorly as the last call was going, I just figured I should check before I'm I went I'm totally not browsing Reddit and rendering stuff in the background. Let me. No. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. So, um, like you guys, um, I 
when I first discovered torrenting, I was like, does everyone else know about this? Like, this is the greatest thing ever. You <laughs> can just get things for free. And for me, it started with LimeWire. Who remembers LimeWire? I do. Mm. Oh, oh, the the um the Windows virus installer system. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, so when I first discovered that, I was like, well, No, that was is... Kaza or Kaza. No, they were both terrible. Uh, they were, anytime, yeah, both of those. Anytime awful. I went to work on someone's computer and they're like, look, I get free music. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> you, <laughs> you get just a lot more knew, than that. <laughs> you just knew what was coming after that. Um, yep. So uh, I, I did torrent a lot for a while. Um, and then like these guys, like, as you learn more and discover more, you're like, wait a second, this is not quite as easy as I thought it was. And it was like Dave around the same time that steam started becoming more of a thing. Um, you know, I, I, I used to like buy and sell PC games on eBay. Uh, so once I started doing that, I pretty much stopped torrenting, um, because I would buy like big packs of games, play the ones I wanted and then sell them all. And this is before like that you had to activate each game. This is when you could still put in just CD keys and play them. Um, so my gaming was actually pretty much like, I, I wasn't spending any money on it because I would just buy stuff cheap. I played a couple years behind the curve and it was no big deal. Um, but so yeah, I, I don't really torrent anymore. And this is, I do make a couple exceptions though. Um, if you have already bought something and for whatever reason, you can't get to that thing at the moment, I don't have a problem with torrenting it. Let me give an example. So it I'm not, doesn't sound like I'm trying to justify it. I bought Mass Effect, the original one on the PC. Um, I played it. I loved it. Uh, and then some in somewhere in moving home from college, I lost it. Um, and like two years later, I wanted to go back and play it again, and I couldn't find it. Um, and I could buy it online for like twenty bucks. I was like, you know, I already paid for it, so I torrented a copy. Now to me. There's no problem with that. What do you guys think? Makes sense to me. I mean, you already paid for it. Right. The thing with torrenting, you are not physically stealing something. So people who say, you know, I'm not, they're not stealing anything. It's a copy. You are technically correct. You're not stealing something. That's not what makes it wrong. What's wrong is that you're denying a sale to somebody. And you might say, well, I was never going to buy that anyway. And maybe then you, that's, don't, then you don't need to play it. Right. Right. That, that's, yeah. No, no, that's I agree not, That's you. not entirely true though, because you are stealing something. You're not you're not physically stealing a thing. You are you are you're taking stealing a digital property. code. Yeah, R okay. you're stealing okay. a copy still, of it. Is is the point? Is that it's, it's not, not like, like you're taking a product off the shelf. I'm saying, are, are you talking about if you already purchased it or just the first time? Because if it's the first time, you're still stealing something. It's still well, it's making a copy. It's really semantics. The overall result yeah, is yeah, the same. Yeah, it's just semantics. The, yeah, the overall result is exactly the same. Okay. But so I, I've torrented for that reason. Um, I torrented a game once because I bought it and then it was so broken because I had games for windows live. I went through like a day and a half loop of trying to get the stupid thing to work. It was grand theft auto four when it first came out on the PC. <laughs> I knew what you were talking about right away. <laughs> I could not get the stinking thing to work. Um, and I'd already, I'd I was already, smart enough and I actually figured out how to use it. I already bought, had bought it on the PS three. <laughs> I've bought grand theft auto four on the PC three times now. I don't want to hear about it. Um, <laughs> but the sales, uh, I bought it on a platform that ended up going dead, but, um, like I just could not get the stupid thing to work and it wasn't, it wasn't even the developer of the game's fault. It was the stupid publisher that packaged stuff in with it. Um, so it, like after two days of that, I was like, screw this. And I went and downloaded it and I, I, you know, really just for the hack, I already had all the install files. It was really just for the hack that gets rid of games for windows live. And I installed that and I was very happy from then on. Um, and to, to me, that's no, like, that's no problem at all. I've already paid the money. It's just to circumvent something dumb, dumb DRM. Like Gabe Newell said, like the solution to torrenting is not to make DRM worse. There's almost no uncrackable DRM. Um, I remember when Assassin's Creed two came out, Ubisoft made this big stink about how it was going to be uncrackable DRM. And I just kept an eye on torrent sites cause I was curious and it took like four days and a fully cracked copy was up. <laughs> The only DRM that is uncrackable. Those four days, though, man. The only DRM that's uncrackable, unfortunately, is the worst type of DRM, and that's always online DRM. Which uh. that's the worst because, as you see with things like Diablo and SimCity, when those games launch, they do poorly. Like always online is a crummy system unless it is a online multiplayer game, and even then, it you don't want it to break that often. But 
um like that is a that is a crummy system that does not make people want to pay for the product more um you know torrenting goes down like torrenting of movies goes down in in areas that when they get netflix torrenting goes way down um torrenting of music goes down when when itunes came out and when amazon music came out torrenting of games has gone down since steam came out um uh, humble bundles all like it's it's very in vogue now to do game bundle sales and stuff so oh, that's yeah. really pushed torrenting down if you give people a good product a lot of the time if people can get it very conveniently and and good they don't mind paying a little money for it yeah like i mean i never mind paying money for things i don't like being jerked around by idiotic publishers that are treating me like a criminal the only people who are not being treated like criminals are the people who download cracked versions because they get to skip all of that. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, that's kind of one of the dumb ironies. Like it's just, you know, yeah, it's sad that's reality not, there. It's not doing the industry any favors. Um, so if you do still torrent and cause you know, I'm not trying to, and, and all these guys I'm sure agree with me. I'm not trying to judge you. I've done it before. Judging. <laughs> uh, well, like, you know, but, if this was kind of a wake up call for you, maybe you should reevaluate it. But something to consider is you see game studios closed down all the time. And if it upsets you that PC exclusives go multi platform because uh, the developers say they aren't making enough money, like Crisis, there's a reason Crisis became multi platform was because Crisis 1 was one of the most torrented games ever. Uh, and Crytek said, we can't, we're, this, we can't be profitable on this. Like, we just barely profited on this one. If we're going to do this again, we need. Uh, we need to have this on multi-platform because the piracy is so much lower on consoles. Piracy is almost non-existent. Um, so if if it irritates you when games get watered down, when they get spread to other platforms, or if if it makes you upset when you like your favorite studio goes out of business and lays everyone off, you are contributing to that. I mean, you are part of the problem. Uh, torrenting and piracy is a big deal. I mean, it really, it's, you're not physically stealing something from somebody, but you are denying money that goes to the people who make the things you love. And so you were getting something for free that was not meant to be free. Exactly. So, you know, I can't make you stop. I like, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to sit actually, here and try actually to Actually, we can. We have the ability. <laughs> no, <laughs> just don't make us press the button. <laughs> the black will. helicopters will come and, and they will take you away. Don't make us press the I button. I have an itchy trigger finger too. <laughs> yeah, a lot of itchy stuff. Um, <laughs> but you know I, like, uh, I can't I can't make you stop I'm not going to try to convince you to stop that's your decision honestly like there's nothing I can do about that but it's important that if you're going to be a sack of crap at least you understand why you're a sack of crap uh, you are only hurting the developers because like companies like EA yeah your piracy isn't hurting them that bad uh, all they're going to do if someone's game isn't popular is they're going to close the studio and move on to someone else so please support the developers you like. And if you can only afford to buy humble bundles or steam sales, do that. Like this is a huge entitlement generation. You don't deserve anything. Yeah. Like just cause it exists doesn't mean you get to have it. Um, just cause you can, you <laughs> I know, want it now. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it, and, and part of that, especially if you're like, you know, if you're under 20 years old or something, the generation you've grown up in, I'm not putting all the blame on you because you've kind of had that drilled into you. Uh, you have the entire world at your fingertips. Um, you have like just insane amounts of technology available to you. Like even I'm not, you know, I'm 24. I'm not that old, but the world is so different from when I was a teenager. I mean, and you guys know too, especially Joel, cause you're really old. Um, <laughs> but like, you know, wouldn't you say and like really wise, <laughs> well, the technology <laughs> world has changed so much, you know, yeah, yeah. that like you've got this entitlement thing is kind of being shoved down your throat. So I'm not putting all the blame on you, but once you realize that that's what's going on, you do have a responsibility to do something about it, at least for you. So you don't deserve anything just because a game exists doesn't mean you automatically get to play it. Um, I mean, all the time, like we try to give away game codes all the time. Uh, and a lot of the times people don't want them because they're like two years old, which blows my mind. But like, if you, if you can't afford to game, you can't afford to game. Like there are free to play games that are awesome. There are bundles that literally let you pay anything you want. You can pay one penny and get like yeah, seven games. <laughs> so like, there is not an excuse, especially if you have a gaming PC, if you have a PC fast enough to play modern games, uh, then you can afford to game. You can build, like, if you're not concerned about prettiness, 
or the highest settings, you can build a game that, a computer that'll play all modern games for less than five hundred dollars, considerably less. So there really isn't an excuse. Um, if you've done it in the past, we have. We're not judging, but you know, don't be a sack of crap. Support the people that do the things that you love if you want them to keep doing them. And don't torrent just to send a message. I did that once because I felt like I was making some big old stand. It really wasn't. It was just an excuse because I wanted to play the game. <laughs> Lame. But, you know, don't... So much angst. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, so edgy. Don't, don't do that, you know? I mean, I, do you guys have anything else you want to chip in? I just, like... I think we're all I was going to say, I, I, we, I, we I are in agreement. Some... I've heard some excuses of a, let's say, let's say I'm a person in Torrance, right? But then I get 10 other people into the game, right? And then they buy the game, right? Let's just say it was Daisy, okay? Yeah. So I torrent Arma or something like that. I'm playing, I'm like, and then I get a lot of, like, 10 of my friends to do it, you know? But let's to say I get, it. to buy it. Let's say I get 10 of them buy it or seven of them buy it, right? Uh, you know, is, is that really good? Well, I mean, maybe, maybe that's pretty cool because you got 10 people to buy it, right? But the thing is, the fact of the matter is, most of the time, you may be a very special scenario <laughs> that happens. Special it's like, like, it's the world is going to be a better place with people doing it less, a lot less, and people actually paying for it and stuff. And it starts actually teaching you values of stuff. Like, you know, is this worth $10 for me to buy? Uh, I don't know. I guess I'll wait. And then when you finally do buy it, there's, you, you have a little bit of appreciation or you have that <laughs> or you have the really pissed off face of like oh my gosh this game sucks so bad that, that <laughs> is i a, made a um, horrible choice but that, um, is, that is a, a totally a thing actually um if you guys think we're just making that up because we're adults telling you not to do something uh it's called what's it called is it the sunk cost analysis or is it the um i forget there's some name for it but when you pay money for something you do appreciate it more than if you got it for free and yes that's, that's why you can have netflix like literally thousands of movies and thousands of TV shows, you could never watch everything on Netflix. <laughs> and yeah, people are really like, feels eh, worth it. there's nothing to watch. But like, if yeah. you had bought 10,000 DVDs, one, you've got a baller movie room. Two, like, you would <laughs> never feel like, oh, there's nothing to wear. Like, there's nothing to, you know, oh, there's, there's nothing to watch. You know, because you've got this huge stacks in front of you, all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, things that, Things which we ad obtain too lightly, we esteem too lightly. Yeah. You know, it's, I'm not trying to be deep yeah. there. Someone else said that, but it, it's, it's true. Like if you don't, the less work you have to put into getting something, the less you appreciate it. So you will appreciate your games more. You will s feel better about yourself and support the developers more. Like just, it's the right thing to do. You know, it is. Yeah, I, I, I. I think most people do. I think it's just hard because it doesn't feel wrong to do it, you know, because you yeah. you're not you're not in a store physically taking something off. You of wouldn't a shelf, download you know? a car. <laughs> All those commercials are so bad. I totally you wouldn't would. kill a police Dude, man. If you could download a car, I would be test driving. Like I'd be like BMW three series. <laughs> <laughs> I would download a car. I'm just yeah. throwing that out there. Honesty moment. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, not sorry. There's a difference between a sixty dollar game and a fifty thousand dollar German luxury <laughs> sports sedan. <laughs> no, but you need sad. that car for work. <laughs> yeah. And is it, and are we now playing the honesty game? Because I was like, dude, if Half Life Three got leaked on a torrent site, oh Lord help me. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, all okay. values gone. <laughs> oh yeah, if it leaked on a torrent site before it came out, I would still buy the crap out yeah, of it. Yeah, I would download it. I would totally buy it day one. But yeah, I would download it immediately just so I could play it. <laughs> But that, but see, at the end, that's not, I'm not making any, like, excuses. That's, that's because that's something I know beyond all shadow of a doubt. I am paying money for this thing, like, as soon yeah, as humanly yeah. possible. For example, I pre-ordered a CD earlier this year. A friend of mine also pre-ordered the CD, but since he's a hipster, he pre-ordered the version that came with an LP. Oh, yeah. The LP shipped out, like, a week earlier, so he got it early. And uh, he was like, hey, I ripped this to MP3s. If you've already bought it, would you like a copy? Uh, and I was like, yes, I would. Cause I've already, pa I've already paid for the music. Oh yeah. It, this yeah. is just like a way to listen to it sooner. So, you know, I guess I would technically still get in trouble for the law with that. I guess I could, but uh, I view that as a, like, that's a, I, I, I have, I've done my dues. I've paid the money. I am supporting the person. Um, I, I would just, imagine in that case, if you got in trouble, you just sent them a copy of your invoice. Like 
must be some kind of mistake. Look, here's my big copy. <laughs> yeah, like, that would really Nothing throw. Nothing I say on this podcast can be used against me. Now that I've said that, it becomes legal. <laughs> yeah, can we just all admit to torrenting on, oh, on the podcast here. We admitted that we've done it before. Um, what's the? Uh, what's I can the hear the helicopters right now. What's the statute of limitations? The statute, statute of limitations. What is the limitation? That's statute. in DC. <laughs> you shall not pass. Oh wow. <laughs> You know, I've actually, I have a record player and I've been buying some uh, records lately have. and that's been pretty awesome because they always give you a download code for the it's MP3. Like, it's like having MP3s, but it's less convenient and it takes up 10,000 times <laughs> the space. I, I'm not getting, I don't get a zillion because I like the amount of music I listen to. Bonobo, would, Bonobo. That's later, better. Yep. Bonobo. That's about it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. But uh, it's awesome because I, you do get it like a week early. It's actually kind of surprising. They're like, it's supposed to ship out on the 20th. I get it like the first. I'm like, what the heck? They're like, hey, so we shipped it out early. I'm like, all right. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't torrent, guys, unless it's Half-Life 3 and you're going to buy it because we know everyone will. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what do you guys, what do you guys think? Like any, anything to cap this out? Um, get a PS4. Well, of judgment. Well, that <laughs> happened at the same time. <laughs> and now judgment. No, no judgment for Dang me. It. No judgment for me. I get why people do it. Like, if you're doing it, I get it. You don't have to explain why you're doing it. I understand. You're getting games for free. Like, everyone gets it. Like, it's like, I mean, pe- people do drugs because they're fun, you know? Like, <laughs> if drugs sucked, people wouldn't do drugs. Um, well, I mean, or, never mind. You know what I mean? Like, I know why you're torrenting. You're torrenting because you're getting free games. You don't have to try to sell me on that. I, I, I get it. Yeah, but, what is more fun than getting free games? But just... Free cars. <laughs> just realize that it's not about, like, it's not all about you, you know? Yeah. Be a decent yeah, person. It. There are real people behind these games that you hopefully enjoy. Just keep them in mind. All right, so uh, do we have anything else to hit on before we leave? Your mom. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for so it. So you left that open right there. And I walked right in that door. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joel. Sorry. <laughs> so dependable. <laughs> no, but seriously, you, your mother is a quaint woman. <laughs> a quaint woman? What does that even mean? <laughs> I'm not sure how to take that. Yeah, like I don't. All right. I'm older than you guys, so it's kind of an older generation type of word. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> Yeah, you guys may not know this, but Joel actually is quite a bit older. All right, well, quite a bit. That's maybe not fair. <laughs> I'm, I'm 28. I'm 28, and you're what? You just turned 24. Just turned 24. Dang, dude, you you definitely feel a lot. Lo- feel why you don't feel <laughs> like you older. feel a lot older. <laughs> Which parts of me feel older? There's <laughs> gotta be a better way to say that, Joel. There's gotta be I a better way to say. say that. Dang you it shut up. your eyes. You reach a hand out. Which parts feel older? <laughs> <laughs> they still work uh, fine i'll have you know <laughs> please let's just end this now end the suffering <laughs> we should call this our entire whole podcast just called laughter That's it. just laughter <laughs> basically i think we just actually added some years onto our life with this podcast oh, <laughs> don't worry oh, joel you're safe <laughs> You have a couple more good ones in you. Yeah, there you go. You're welcome. <laughs> you don't have to outgrow silly things like portable gaming systems and your PS4 like yet. Consoles. It's console. Uh, I wish you guys lived closer so you could come check out the PS4. Dave lives like ten minutes away from you. Well, Dave hates consoles, so he's not I w- gonna. Come I wish here. I lived near you. I would come over to your house all the time. I just like hang out at your house, like you just show up from work. And so I, I like, can feel how young you are. Hey, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this really, this is <laughs> just going downhill at an alarming rate. <laughs> yeah, we're in a nosedive here, I'm pretty sure. Well, I feel like we peaked at 30 episodes. <laughs> it's all downhill from here. Uh, maybe take you us home, peaked. Jeremiah, take us home. I'm still, I'm still entering my prime. Uh, <laughs> So, if you want to be a part of the show, write into casual shenanigans at gmail.com. Tweet at casual shenanigans, at germ gaming, at evil viking. Follow us 
all on those things. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Don't subscribe to Joel. Um, <laughs> for no particular reason. YouTube.com uh, slash boundless MP. Yes. Just so you know hey, what you're avoiding. You should you should search on my channel my reality TV show review because I have a SpongeBob costume I built. Now yes, next week I actually it, made one. Next week is Thanksgiving, oh so I'm assuming we're taking the week off. Correct. Uh but probably December fifth. Everyone around on December fifth? Uh let uh, me check. I believe so. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Because um <clears throat> On December 5th, we are going to announce our... Oh, gosh! December 5th! No! There's a Rift Tracks event! No! What movie? Uh, Santa vs. the Martians. Oh, I've seen that one. Santa Claus Conquers the Martians? Yeah, San Santa Claus. Yeah, that one. That oh, I've good. never seen it, too. Dang it. I could mail you a DVD. Oh, man, but or Santa just download it. What somewhere. time are we going to do it, though? Can we uh, do it early? the slow way, isn't it? Uh, easy, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So that, that's not going to be the special podcast. If you have to miss it, that's okay. That's when we're going to announce what our special Christmas podcast is going to be. All right. Yes. Yes. And uh, so that's going to be the oh, next oh, podcast. Oh, that's not the actual. Okay, got it. I thought that was the Christmas podcast. No, no, no. The 5th okay. of December. Make sure you do not miss it. Um, but yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be awesome. So thank you guys for listening. Anyone have any closing shots before we go? I apologize for all of these people. All right. That's one. That's one. I regret nothing. <laughs> You'll never you catch me, coppers. <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> what? <laughs> I never torrented. <laughs> <sighs> Stop resisting. Bang, 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 bang. Good times, you guys. Stay times. casual. Because we definitely are. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, See guys. you guys. See you guys.